In this video, we're going to talk about the partial fraction method using Laplace transform techniques. We do Laplace transform techniques. We do it slightly differently. Uh, so we can talk about that later. And then we also do about 20 uh, problems there. So uh, Laplace, the partial fraction method is very important when you try to do the inverse Laplace transform. That's when we're going to use that inverse Laplace transform. And also, the way we do it here is is different, slightly different in certain cases, not every time, certain uh, cases, than the standard uh, partial fraction technique. So we're going to see when this is going to uh, change. So we're going to go uh, different types, uh, one by one. So let's start with the most common one is the division. So let's start with the first problem. Say we have s plus 5 over s plus 2. So if you have something like that, what we can do is we can use a simple algebra trick here. So the goal is to recreate the bottom term in the numerator. So what we're going to do, we're going to write that uh, numerator like this. We're going to write s plus 2 first, because that's the denominator term. And then we're going to adjust the other term. So you can see uh, we have s plus 2, we have 5 here, that means we have a 3 as a leftover. And then divided by uh, s plus 2. Now what we can do, we can split them. We can write this one as uh, uh, two uh, fractions. We can write first one as s plus 2 over s plus 2. That's the first one. And then we have 3 over uh, s plus 2. So that means finally your answer is going to be 1 plus 3 over s plus 2. So that is how we can uh, rewrite uh, something like that. So just using a simple algebra and also like you can get the same answer by using a long division so you can use a long division so use the long division so let's see how we can do that it will be useful later so long division so what we can do we can have s plus 5 so we can divide this one by uh, s plus 2 and when you divide by s plus 2 and you can see that there's a 1 of them so we have 1 and when you multiply by 1 you're going to get s plus 2 and then what we do next is we're going to subtract them when you subtract what we normally do is we're going to change the sign of the uh, bottom one and add so if you only do that you get 3 as the uh, remainder so that means you can write this uh, division problem like this so when you divide s plus 5 with s plus 2 you get 1 as the quotient that's that one and then how you write the rest you get a 3 as a remainder you also need to write the divisor here and that's how you write the answer and you can see this exactly match with uh, uh, the previous answer so the same thing so you can also get the answer using the Lone division. And also, I would like to discuss the synthetic division uh, for this problem. So, so we can also use the synthetic division. Synthetic. Synthetic division. And when you do that, we only worry about uh, the coefficients. So, how we write this problem? So, it is s plus 5. s plus 5, you can write as 1 and 5. Because those are the coefficients. And then what we do, we write it the other way, we write it like that. So we, exactly the opposite. And then we need to write the zero. So S plus two means the zero is negative two. So we have plus two. So the zero is actually negative two. And then what we do, so that's what you write first. You write the zero. And then we're going to copy this number down. So this one, you re rewrite it. And then we're going to multiply by this number and we're going to add that number here. So when you multiply by negative 2 with 1 and you add, you get negative 2. And you can see when you, now we add them. So we add them down. So when you add and you can see you get 3. So this is actually going to give you all the coefficients. So what this means is when you divide s plus 5 with s plus 2 because you put the 0 there you get 1 as the quotient because 1 plus same thing 
and then this is the uh, remainder so it's 3 so it's a 3 over uh, s plus 2 so you'll see same answer using all three methods so you can use any of those methods to get the answer when you have a division like that so let's do uh, another problem so as the next one we have s plus 2 over s plus 5 so it's the same problem but upside down so what will happen here is uh, same argument we're going to recreate the denominator in the numerator so that means we're going to uh, in the 5 so we have s plus 5 so what you want to do is to cancel this because you just add a 5 you can just add a 5 so what you want to do is you have to cancel this 5 that means you're going to subtract 5 so that means you can write this one as uh, you're going to get so we have a 2 here already but you have to subtract 5 and then over s plus 5 and you can see that you can simplify this one as s plus 5 uh, and then minus 3 over s plus 5 and if you do the uh, simplification as before you get a 1 minus 3 over s plus 5 so you can write the answer like that you don't write all those steps but i'm just writing all the steps just to explain uh, what's going on here so again, what was the argument? You're going to recreate the denominator in the numerator. That's how we do. Okay, so let's do uh, another one. So let's do next one. So say we have a, uh, a squared or a squared plus 3. So it'll be a very similar argument. So we can write this one as, uh, so same thing. So a squared, we're going to recreate the, the numerator, the denominator in the numerator, and then you subtract 3 so so that they cancel 3 and 3 cancel out and then a squared plus 3 now again we split them so when you split you get 1 minus 3 over a squared plus 3 so that's what you get and when you do the inverse Laplace transform we will see how we can use this idea so it's be very clear after this okay so let's do the next one so next suppose we have x a squared divided by a squared minus 4 so this problem actually this is not uh, like for first what we do is we're going to factor the bottom and write as x minus 2 x plus 2 but we are not going to do that when you do the laplace transform so that is a that's a different one so we normally factor these two and then we can write those factors but we are not going to do that when you do the laplace transform so that is like a different one so what to do we do the same argument as before so we're going to recreate the denominator that means it's a squared minus 4 and then plus 4 and then we have uh, a squared minus 4 and then split you get 1 plus 4 over a squared minus 4 and we can stop like that so you can see this is this is different from the regular um, partial fraction method so this one is different from the regular partial fraction method we are not going to factor this one and it will be very clear when we do the actual problem uh, also like if you try to do that that way uh, i'm going to call this as the method two this is what happened so uh, so let's start with the problem so we have squared over squared minus four what we normally do is we're going to uh, factor the bottom not the top so which is s minus two s minus two and then s minus 2 s plus 2 and then we can write the partial fractions here so we can write identical to uh, if you write it a over s minus 2 and b over s plus 2 actually this is incorrect this is not what you get so be careful with that the reason is you can see these two terms are the same so that means the degrees are the same degree of the numerator equal degree of the denominator so it's a degree of the numerator equal degree of the denominator so when this happens, you need to do the division so when you divide these two just the leading coefficient and you can see that a squared of a squared actually going to give you one so the correct um, factorization of this one would be so it's going to be uh, not that one so it's going to be one you get one when you divide the two plus the rest so it's a over s minus two plus b over s plus 2 
and if you are confused with one you can actually just write it like this if you want you can say okay a plus b over s minus 2 plus c over s plus 2 you can also write it like that and then find all a b c and then you will see that a is equals to 1 if you do that but if you can do that beforehand if you divide those two uh, numbers a squared over a squared two terms a squared a squared and you see that you're going to get one so you can actually get there directly and then we're going to discuss this later when you talk about those uh, distinct linear factors okay so let's look at the next one you can also get the same answer just by the lone division so uh, so what we can do is in this case a squared so you can divide a squared by a squared minus four so you can see that uh, you have one of them here so you can write one and when you subtract what you get is you can see when, when you can multiply what you get is a squared minus four now what we can do we can subtract them when you subtract them you see that you change the sign and add you get a four so that exactly tell you what's going to happen so that means when you divide uh, a squared by a squared minus four you get a one and a four and a squared minus four so you see that you get the same answer that's the other way to do this just with the lone division now let's talk about the next main type so first we discuss the division technique so that's a division technique you just divide and get the answer so let's talk about the next one this is what we normally call the distinct linear factor situation so distinct linear factors and we assume that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator so we're going to make the assumption degree of the numerator is less than degree of the denominator if not what we do we first do the division we do the division and get the remainder part and then we do that so that's what we do okay so let's look at the major theory part so what we do we normally start with a problem like this so let's say you have some term s plus 7 over let's say you have uh, s so we, we uh, for the laplace transform we use s so we have all the s here so it is s minus a and then uh, s minus b so what we do we can write this one as a partial fraction so make sure that write, you write three lines here because we use the identity property. It's not two lines, it should be three lines uh, because uh, we use the property of identities, not property of equations. Uh, so it is a over s minus a plus b over uh, s minus b. Okay, so the goal is to find a and b. So let's look at actual problem here. Let's say we have s plus 7 over s minus 1, s minus 2. So we write this identical to a over s minus 1 plus b over s minus 2. That's what we do. We look at the distinct factors and write one for each. And then, uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, let's talk about the method 1. So the method 1. Or this is like a standard method for this one so what we normally do is we can multiply the whole equation by this factor we're gonna multiply by this on both sides so once you do that you will see on the left side you only get s plus 7 identical to on the other side what will happen is you're gonna cancel the one in the bottom and you get the other one so that means for the first one you get s minus 2 because you can cancel out and for the next one you get s minus 1 now so this is not an equation this is an identity so since this is an identity you can plug in any value you want here but we're gonna be like kind of uh, smart here we're gonna plug in special values so for example if you want to find a what you're gonna do you try to make the other term zero that's the goal if you want to find a try to make the other term zero so that we could plug in s equal 1 then the other term is going to go zero so that's the argument here so with a substitution so we can substitute uh, s equal one so when you substitute s equal one and you can see on the left side you get eight now i add equal sign a times if you plug in s equal one you get here one minus two and you can see this is going to give you a as um, negative eight and the same thing 
So you're gonna go to the other one, so you're gonna substitute. So if you want to find B, try to make the first term zero. To make the first term zero, you plug in C equal to this is how we do. So if you do that, so you get nine on this side, and then uh, we get first term is zero, so you get B times if you plug in two, uh, you get two minus one, which is one. So what you get is B equal nine. So you directly find A and B quickly, and then that's it. So that means you can plug in those values here. So if you go back and substitute, we normally put the negative sign in front. So we write negative eight over s minus one plus nine over s minus two as the partial fraction decomposition. Okay. So this is the first method, and but there is also a shortcut method, what we normally call the cover-up method. So let's talk about the cover-up method quickly. So this is a method two. So the second method is the cover-up method and this is how it works. So let's look at the same problem. So we have s plus 7 now s minus 1 s minus 2 which is identical to a of s minus 1 plus b of s minus 2. So if you want to find a, so what we're going to do is we're going to cover up the term what is in the denominator. So that means you can write a, so a is equals to, we look at what is on the left side which is s plus 7 over s minus 1 s minus 2 so what we do we can ignore s minus 1 term so we're going to cut it off we're going to cover it up and then we're going to for the rest of the term we're going to plug in s equal 1 which is the 0 so we can plug in the 0 from here to the rest of the term that's, that's the cover-up method. So we're going to cover up that term, but in the denominator, and for the rest of the term, we're going to plug in the zero. So that means you're going to go into get 1 plus 7 over 1 minus 2. So that's what you get, and you can see this is going to be negative 8. Negative 8 or 1, so which is negative 8. So that's the idea. And similarly, uh, you can also find the other one. So let's see how to get the b. So when you want to find b, what we do, we're going to cover up, so it's s plus 7 over s minus 1, s minus 2. Now we're going to cover up s minus 2 term. So we're going to cover up this one. So for the rest of the term, now we're going to plug in s equal 2. So that means it is going to be 2 plus 7 over uh, 2 minus 1. So that means it's going to give you 9 over 1, which is 9. So that's the idea. And you can see it's like a very simple idea, and you can, it can save time. You can directly find the values uh, using uh, this uh, cover-up method. So let's look at another example. So as the next one, we have s plus 7 over s, s minus 1, s plus 2. So as before, we can write this one as identical to a over the first one is s and the second one is b over the next one is s minus 1 and then c over s plus 2 and then what we after after that what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by this factor so when you multiply by that factor you're going to get s plus 7 on this side identical to a what you're going to get is you're going to you uh, you do not write this term but write everything else you write the other terms so that means so it's going to go into be s minus 1 and s plus 2 that's the first one if you go to the b you can see you're going to cancel you're not going to write this term but write everything else so that means it is going to be s s plus 2 and then if you go to the c it's a c s and write s uh, s minus 1 S minus one. So that's what you get. Now what we're going to do, the idea is, if you want to find a term, we're going to use a substitution technique here. So we're going to substitute. So the idea is this. Let's say you want to find A. If you want to find A, look at the other two terms and find what is common in the other two terms. And you can see S is common in the other two terms. So the goal is to make that term zero. To do that, you're going to plug in S equals zero. So that's the idea. You try to make the common term on the other term 0. So if you plug s equals 0, you can see you get 7 here. 
and then a so it again see you get negative 1 and 2 and this can give you a so a is simply negative 7 half and then we do similar argument so and then we can substitute uh, for to find b and you can see the common term now is s minus 1 s minus 1 s minus 1 in common so that means you're going to plug in s equal 1 when you do that you get 8 on this side and then b so you get 1 times uh, 3 so that's going to give you the value of b which is 8 third and similarly you can substitute s equal negative uh, negative 2 over s equal uh, negative 2 to find c so if you do that you get 5 on this side and c negative 2 uh, negative 3 and then this can simplify and you're going to get c as 5 6 so those are the uh, three values you can get them quickly and you can also use the cover up method uh, to find all those three values so let's do that in a, in a next example So as the next one, we have 2s squared plus 3 over s cubed minus 4s. And you can see uh, the bottom is not factored. So we do the factoring first. So you can write this one as 2s squared plus 3. If you pull s out, you can write this one as s squared minus 4. And you can see the bottom, you can factor more. So you're going to get 2s squared plus 3 over s s minus 2 and s plus 2 from the uh, difference squares factoring and we know the difference squares so when you have a squared minus b squared this can be factored as a minus b and a plus b so this is like a very important tool okay so now since we have different linear factors we can write the form now so that means going to be 2 is uh, 2s squared plus 3 over so we have s3 minus uh, 4s actually let's look at the factored form for this one um, because it will be clear so we have s s minus 2 and s plus 2 which is identical to as before we can write a over s that's the first term that's no order you can write any order you like and then b over s minus 2 and c over s plus 2 so let's use the cover up method now so in the cover up method let's say a so what is a so if you want to find a uh, so 2 s squared plus 3 and we do not write this one when you find a so we write the rest so that means it is going to be s minus 2 and s plus 2 and we can substitute the zero which is zero and when you do that uh, you're going to get a three in the numerator in the bottom you're going to get negative two and a two so which is going to give you negative three fourth so that's a and we can do the similar argument for b and c so you get this and similarly for c you get this and then if you plug in the values you can write it like this so we have 2 squared plus 3 of s cubed minus 4 is equal negative 3 4 negative uh, 3 4 and then 1 of s and plus 11 8 1 over s minus 2 and plus 11 8 1 over s plus 2 so you can write like that okay so let's look at uh, the uh, other case let's see what happened if the de degree of the numerator and the de denominator are the same so uh, so the degree of the numerator equal degree of the denominator so let's look at this problem so let's say we have uh, 2 s squared plus 3 divided by let's say s squared minus s minus 6 something like that and you notice that the these two have the same degree 
is squared. So what happened when you do the long division and you can see that you are going to get a 2. So we can start with that. So we can say 2. That's what you get from the long division. And then the rest. So rest as before you know that the bottom you can factor it as s minus 3 and s plus 2. So those are not, this, uh, not different. It's the same thing. So it is a over uh, s minus 3 plus b over s plus 2. So that's what you get. And then, uh, so we do the same thing. So you can use the uh, cover up method for this one. So with a is simply going to be 2s squared plus 3 divided by s plus 2. And you plug in s equal 3. And when you do that, uh, you're going to get 21 over 5th. And then b is similarly, it is 2s squared plus 3 over uh, s minus 3. That's what you get. And then again, plug in s equal uh, negative 2. So when you do that, you can get negative 11 fifth. So those are the a and b values. So, uh, so you can write uh, the final answer, which is 2 uh, plus 21 fifth, uh, 1 over s minus 3. Then minus one minus eleven fifth uh, one over s plus two so that's a, a partial fraction and also what happened what about this one let's see uh, so the question I want to say eight star can there be a problem like this two s cube plus three over uh, s squared minus s minus 6 in a regular problem regular partial fraction problem this is okay but not in when you do laplace transform so this cannot happen you cannot have a uh, because when you see when you simplify these two when you divide these two you get 2s that's not possible uh, in when you do the laplace transforms so cannot so you can see you cannot find the uh, inverse laplace transform of this one so there's no inverse laplace transform on this one um, because it has to be the same or less. The numerator degree has to be the same degree or it should be the degree less than that. Okay, so let's look at the next one, problem number nine. So in this one, let's start talk about what happens if the factors repeat. So repeat a linear factor. So we can look at a situation like this. So let's say we have s plus seven over uh, s minus a and so s minus a and s minus b squared so if you get something like that uh, we know that a uh, partial fraction has to be a over s minus a plus now there's a question so we know that there's a term uh, s minus b so it should be b because always the degree of the numerator is one degree less than the denominator and then what happened here? What happened? So we know that the bottom has to be, we can write all the terms up to the highest power. Here, highest power is 2, so we can write all the way. Now the question is, what do you can write for the numerator? Numerator has to be degree 1 less than the denominator, but we are not going to do that for this special case when the term repeat. You can show that um, the, the numerator follow the same pattern as the first one least one so that means you just need a constant here um, so and let's see why we can do that so let's look at the next problem and see why we why why this is the case why you don't want to write c s plus d so let's look at problem number nine now let's say we have s plus three divided by s minus two squared so we can do the long regular division problem for this one. So what we try to do, we try to recreate the numerator, the denominator here. So, so what we're going to do, first we can write this one as s minus 2, that's the term in the den denominator, the, the factored version. And then what we're going to do, you're going to, because you subtract, so to cancel that, you're going to add a 2 
and you're going to subtract two. So since we subtract here, uh, so you're going to, to cancel that, the argument is since you subtract, you have to add a two to cancel it. So that means it's going to be five on the other side, three plus, three plus two, five over s minus two squared. So we can always do that. We can recreate the term in the uh, denominator. Now we can split them. So when you split them, you can write this one as s minus two over s minus two squared plus five over s minus two squared. And in the first term, you can see, you can simplify this one. When you simplify, you can see that this is one over uh, s minus two plus five over s minus two squared. So you can see that they have the same pattern. So it's just a constant in both. So you do not need a, um, so if you go there, you do not need a CS plus D term here because you can always uh, do this argument. And because of this argument, you can see these two terms match. So it's going to be always the format of the first term. Okay, so that's the argument here. Okay, and this is how you do this uh, problem without uh, partial fraction. You can just directly write it, uh, the, the technique. Okay, so let's do one more example with the like higher term. So let's see this like interesting uh, uh, trick here. So how about the next one? So we do a similar argument. So let's say we have two s squared plus three over s minus two squared. Um, so, so the idea is, uh, we know the bottom term is, uh, it is s squared minus four s plus four. That's what happened when you distribute this. So we try to use a similar argument as before. So we try to recreate the denominator term now. So how to do that? So we can write this one as, so we can recreate. So we're going to say two, but that's a two here. And then we can rewrite this term, s squared minus four s plus four. So that's what you need for the bottom. Now we can adjust the rest of the terms. So we only have two s squared, so that term is fine. But we had a, we have a, when you, multi, when you do this one, you get negative eight s. So as to cancel that, we're going to add eight s there. And then also, when you multiply the numbers, you get eight, but we only have a three here. So that means you need to subtract five to get three. So that's what it is. That's the adjustment we do. And then the bottom is S, uh, S minus two squared, S minus two squared. So now we can split them. So you can see the top is simply s minus two squared. So that means when you divide, you get a two from the first term. In the next term, we have eight, eight s. Again, we can do the changes to the next two terms. So we can do this one. So let's take care of that one now. So which is, we can write this one as, uh, if you pull eight out, you can write this one as s minus two. That's the bottom term. So you're going to recreate the bottom term as in the previous example. But when you do that, you can see that you're going to get negative uh, 12, but you can only have a negative five. That means to cancel that. So what we can do, we're going to add a 11 here. So then when you simplify, you get negative five over uh, S minus two. So this is like similar to previous example. So you can see you get two and then you get uh, eight over s minus 2 plus 11 over s minus 2 square. So you can directly get this one actually without um, using partial fraction technique. It's just a simple algebra trick and you can get the whole fraction here. Okay, so good. And then let's try to see as the next example how we actually do this and get the actual answer. So we're going to uh, do it the right way at the normal way and then we get the, get the answer again.
so we start with the same problem uh, so we have 2 a squared plus 3 over s minus 2 squared which uh, you can see when you divide as before 2 a squared and this also have a, a squared term here a squared so, I mean when you divide what you get is the first term you get is 2 plus the rest you can write as we normally do which is a over uh, s minus 2 and then b over s minus 2 square so we're going to do the regular way and see whether you can get the same answers and then what we normally do is we're going to multiply by uh, the factored version so that means when you multiply you get 2 s squared plus 3 uh, identical to 2 what you get here is s minus 2 squared and then a you get one term here and then b just get b okay so and then after that we can use uh, substitutions so we're going to substitute uh, first you're going to substitute s equal 2 when you substitute s equal 2 you can see that you get 11 on this side the other side is you get b so b equal 11 so you can get the b value directly and to get the um, a value what you can do is You can actually plug in a smart value here so because you can see that you uh, you can plug in two again but what we try to do is we try to plug in smart value the goal is see whether you can make uh, this term one if you can make this term one then you can get a directly so what we're going to do we're going to plug in a c equal three so let's plug in a c equal three substitute s equal three so when you substitute s, s equal three what happened on the left side you get 21 because it is 9 times 2 plus 3 is 21 and if you plug in 3 you get 2 and then a we don't know b already we know that's 11 so this can give you the value of a so you can see value of a is 8 and you can see uh, these two values match the two previous values so that's like how you can find it uh, using the um, partial fractions okay so uh, let's look at another example so let's look at the next one so let's say we have s plus 7 over s plus 2 s minus 1 squared and we can this is like a regular uh, partial fraction problem so we write this one term by term so it's the first one is a over s plus 2 and then the second one is a repetition so we start with the smallest one which is s minus 1 b and the rest of the terms follow the same pattern that means s minus 1 squared which also follow the same pattern so it's a c so goal is to find a b c and then um, standard uh, technique so we're going to multiply by the uh, denominator term on the left side the whole expression so you get s plus 7 identical to a and then what happened here is you're going to cancel this plus 2 term and write the rest so it is s minus 1 squared from the first one second one you only cancel one of this minus 1 so you get s plus 2 and one of this minus 1 and this last one see you cancel the whole s minus 2 squared term so you only get s plus 2 okay and then you can see you can use a substitution to find two terms just two terms so let's do that first we use what they call the hybrid method for this one so we the substitution as much as you can first and then go for the coefficients that's the quickest way to get the answer so we're going to go the substitution so we're going to substitute uh, to find let's say you're going to find a you're going to find a see here there's a common term yes there's a common term so you can try to make that term zero so that means you're going to substitute s equal negative 2 so when you do that you get 5 on this side this is a if you plug in negative 2 negative 2 negative 1 squared which is going to be 9 and then all the terms are 0 this is going to give you a so a is uh, 5 over 9 and then let's try to find b and you can see you cannot find b using a substitution because there's no common value on the other two terms so you cannot find b 
but you can find C. So we're gonna go to the C. So when you find C, you can see if you look at uh, S minus one, S minus one is there. So we're gonna apply in S equal one. So we're gonna apply in S equal one. So substitute S equal one. So when you do that, you get eight on this side. And C, you plug in one, you get S plus three. So you get S plus two, you get three. This is gonna give you C value, which is eight third. Now the question is how to find how to find b so to find b you can plug in any just some other value if you just plug in any other value other than negative 2 and 1 then you can find b from this one because you just get equation and solve it and get the value uh, but there's like an easy way what's the easy way this is not an equation this is an identity that's why this has to be an identity since it's an identity the coefficients of both sides should match it to each other. So we can use that property here. So we can say we're going to match the coefficients of the largest term. That means s squared. So there's no s term, s squared term on this side, so zero. But you can see when you distribute the first term, which is s squared minus 2s plus 1, and there is a squared term. So the square term. So that means the coefficient has to be a in this case. Because when you have squared, when you multiply by a, so a. And then also you can see there's a square term coming from these two. That means the coefficient is b. And you can see that there are no more square terms. So that means this is going to give you b. So b has to be just the negative of a. So that means negative finite. So that is the easiest way to find the three coefficients in a situation like that because if you just do it like that it doesn't take much time uh, but this is like a special technique so we do the substitution as much as you can and then you the coefficient is start with the highest power this is what we normally call the hybrid method so we use the hybrid method for this one hybrid method so use the coefficient we use the substitution first and then the coefficients and if you have one more we just keep going then we're going to go with the coefficient of coefficient of s but we in this case we don't have to Okay, so let's go to the uh, next problem. Actually, before we go to the next problem, I would like to discuss uh, another technique uh, to find this value. So another technique. So we can use the cover-up method and something else. So let's see how we can use that. So second method. So we start with the same expression. Then what we can do, actually you can find A and B using the cover-up method. A, not A and B, A and C. The largest terms you can always find using the cover up method. So let's see. So for the a, so what we can do is so you're gonna cancel s plus two, so you're gonna get a like this. So here is plus seven, and you only ignore s plus two term, you cover up s plus two term and plug in the zero, which is negative two, so you get five over a negative three squared, which is five ninth. That's exactly what we get earlier. We can also find C like that. So C is, if you cover up S minus 2 squared term, you're going to get, um, so S plus 7 or S plus 2 and evaluate it at S equal 1. So when you do that, you get 8 over 3. And you can see those two numbers actually match. Now the question is, how we can find B? So you can use the cover up method for B. But what we can do, we can do something interesting. What we're gonna do, we try to make this term equal to one. We just try to make this equal to one. So that means, so then you get B directly. So what we do, we're gonna plug in S equal two to the whole expression. So let's substitute S equal two. So when you do that, and you can see on the left side, you get nine uh, divided by four. And on the other term, we already know what's the value of a. So let's plug in that. So it is 5 ninth. And when you plug in uh, c equal 2, so you get 1 fourth. And then b, that's what we are looking for. And then 8 third. Now what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to solve for b. Okay, so if you solve for b, it's going to give you b equal just like algebra problem after that five nine so that's like another way to do it so use the cover up method to find the a and c 
to find the other value just plug in some other value but the, what we try to do we try to make the bottom equal to one so we can simplify as well when you do that so we plug in c equal to so in c equal to you get the value of b so that's like another technique to find um this abc okay so okay i have never seen this one anywhere like uh, this 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 argument this trick here okay so let's look at uh, several special cases now special situations so special case of problem number 13 so let's let's say we have s plus 7 over s squared minus 4 normally like if you get a problem like that what we normally do we're gonna break this as s minus 2 and s plus 2 and find the partial fractions but when you when you do the laplace transform inverse laplace transform we have we don't want to do that we already have the answer right here so what we we just split this we can write this one as s over s squared minus 4 plus 7 over s squared minus 4 that's the first step we split them into two and then now let's see how we can write the inverse transform because we know that uh, the sine and cosine uh, actually in this case the um, hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine so these are the identities that we have and we know these two uh, results we know the uh, Laplace tra transform of hyperbolic cosine cos omega t is equal to s over s squared minus omega squared and the plus transform of shin omega t which is omega over omega square minus so what we try to do we try to bring it to this form so only thing that we need to worry about is this special omega going there the square root of uh, this term so we're going to recreate that so because of that so i'm going to do this laplace inverse laplace transform problem here so let's say l inverse so we have s plus 7 over s squared minus 4 which is equals to uh, inverse laplace transform of s over s squared minus 4 and here what we're going to we're going to make some adjustments so you can see the special number that you need so we did which is s squared minus 4 so the special number so we know that the 4 is 2 squared that means the special number that we need to the top is 2 so what we do we divide by 2 and multiply by 2 so you put the 2 inside and 2 put outside but outside has to be one half to cancel each other and then we put the 7 here that's the 7 you had so now we can write the inverse so we can write the answer that means going to be this is cos uh, 2t because 2 is the omega in this case and then plus 7 half shin shin uh, 2t so you can write it like that so that's the idea and you can see this is different from the regular partial fraction fraction um, method uh, so we did not write the partial fraction for this one we can directly write the answer uh, using hyperbolic functions okay but you can still do it and then but it's just a wasting time because we can we already have the answer right there okay so let's do uh, another example actually before doing another example let's see what exactly happened if you do that if you uh, try to find the partial fractions what what exactly happened so let's look at that so so you have plus seven or square minus four and then you can see that the fracture uh, factor size minus two and is plus two so that means your partial fraction going to be identical to a over one of them and the other one and you can see you can use the cover-up method for this one so you're gonna get a and b like this and b now we can plug in those values so we can write this one as l inverse uh, s plus 7 over s squared minus 4 so we can write this one as the coefficient 9 4 so I'm gonna pull it out and then you can have l inverse so what you get is 1 over s minus 2 and then plus and the minus again 5 fourth l inverse 1 over s plus 2 so what happened now we can uh, find them so we can see this is simply 9 fourth uh, e to the 2t 
that's the inverse of 1 over s minus 2 e to the 2t because we know this identity so we know that uh, if we have the Laplace transform of uh, e to the minus a t is going to be 1 over s plus a so that's what we use um, and then or if you change the sign so if you want to write e a t the opposite sign is going to be 1 over s minus a so it's the same thing just opposite sign so because of that you get that and the similarly you can get this one as 9 uh, 5 fourth you have 5 fourth uh, e to the minus 2t now what we can do we can plug in for these two uh, these two from using the hyperbolic functions so if you the hyperbolic function you can plug into those two expressions so what you get is it is simply 9 fourth and we know that e to the 2t actually equals to cos 2t plus sin 2t that's the uh, e to the 2t and similarly you can plug in for the other one 5 fourth that's going to be cos 2t minus sin 2t. Now what to do? Do the algebra and simplify. And when you do that, you can see that you exactly get the same answer. You can get cos 2t plus 7 half sin 2t. So you get the same answer. Even with this method, but it's a little long. Because you could have got the answer much earlier, much quicker, if you've seen the other technique. Okay, so let's look at, uh, at the next one. So, so let's look at a very special problem and that we normally don't do uh, in the regular partial fraction method. So we have the next problem. This is uh, question 13. I'm going to call it 13 star because it's a very special problem. So we have uh, this. So we have s plus 7 over, let's say, s plus 1 and s squared minus 4. So if you get a problem like that, what we normally do, we're going to completely factor the bottom. And But in uh, Laplace transform technique, we are not going to do that. So, that. so this problem is especially different from other problems. So what we normally do, we leave it like that. So that is the difference between regular technique and this technique. So we write the standard way a over s plus 1. And for the other term, we leave it like that. We do not factor. We write it s squared minus 4. So it's a degree 2. That means this has to be degree 1. So the b s plus c. So the goal is to find a, b, c. And then after that, we know this is like a regular problem. So um, we can multiply by both sides so you're going to get s plus 7 identical to a so you get s squared minus 4 here plus b s plus c you get s plus 1 and then uh, we're going to use the hybrid technique so we're going to go with the substitution as as much as we can so we're going to say we're going to substitute uh, s equal negative 1 so when you do that you get 6 equal a, if you plug in negative 1, you get 1 minus 4 on this side. That's going to give you the value of A, so which is uh, 6 divided by negative 3, so which is negative 2. So we use the hybrid technique. So we're going to go with the coefficient technique now. So we're going to go with the highest coefficient, so which is S squared. And you can see there's no S squared term on this side, so it's 0. And you can see you get a squared from this and also from that so that means the coefficients are a from the first one b from the second one and that's it that means you can find b which is just the negative of a so which is 2 so we only know 2 only thing that we don't need to find is c so we go for the next lower coefficient so which is the coefficient of s so if you go for that you can see the 1 on this side and there's no S term from the first one but from the second one you can see you get S term if you multiply B S and 1 so that the coefficient is B 
and also you get another one if you multiply c and s so the coefficient is c so if you plug in the value of b uh, so c is equals to uh, 1 minus b so which is going to give you negative 1 so that's what you get as the fractions uh, as the coefficient so we can write it like this now so we have this after you plug in the values but what we normally do is we can uh, in when you do the inverse Laplace transform we can split this term and we can write it uh, like this so you can write this as 2 over s plus 1 and then the next one you pull the 2 out you write this one as s over s squared minus 4 and then next one you pull the minus one out you write this one as 1 over s squared minus 4 and then you can see that it's very easy to find the inverse now term by term okay so uh, but we do that in uh, when, uh, in the inverse Laplace transform video we're gonna do that we're gonna do like a couple of examples and this will be one of the examples and how to find the inverse of this so we talk about that again yeah. okay and you can find the link in the description okay so why don't you try this as an exercise so try to do this one uh, on your own so what happened if we have s plus 7 over s plus 1 and then we have s squared minus 3 and you can clearly see that in this case it will be very difficult if you try to do the standard way what is the standard way we're going to factor the bottom as s minus square root 3 s plus square root 3 and the algebra would be very difficult if you don't do that especially with square root terms so this would be the best way to do it okay but why don't you try this one okay so let's look at the next one let's talk about the other type so first type what we did just the division next we talk about the different linear factors and then third we talk about repeated linear factors now let's talk about what we have when we have the quadratic factors so what we normally call quadratic factors but normally like irreducible quadratic factors those are irreducible irreducible so why we worry about the irreducible part so let's say you have uh, something like this uh, s plus 7 over s squared minus s minus 6 but if you have something like that and you can you know that clearly you can factor the bottom so you can write this one as s minus 3 and s plus 2 so that means you can break it down so you can write this one as uh, so s plus 7 better write like that so let's say this is equal to s plus 7 over s minus 3 and s plus 2 so you can break it down now so you can write this one as identical to a over s minus 3 and the b over s plus 2 and then we can find a and b using a uh, cover-up method or any other technique so but that's not the issue let's look at this problem so when you look at this problem s plus 7 over s minus 1 s squared plus 4 you can see this problem is different from other problems the reason is this is irreducible this one is irreducible because you cannot break it to two linear factors with real coefficients so these are what we normally call irreducible ones so if it is a irreducible one what we normally do uh, this is like similar to the previous problem that we did so we can write this one as uh, a over the linear factor s minus 1 plus here the bottom is s squared plus 4 you can break this one so it has to be b s plus c so it's be very similar to the uh, problem 13 so we use a standard procedure so we're going to multiply both sides by uh, the denominator term so you get a uh, equal a times s squared plus 4 plus b s plus c times s minus 1 like a standard problem so we do the substitution and the coefficient techniques so then we're going to get these so you get a as 8 fifth now we go with the coefficient technique with the largest coefficient then go for the next coefficient the coefficient of s so you get c as negative 3 fifth now uh, we're going to plug in the values and we can write it like this 
there. So we can plug in the value and then we can also split uh, the these two terms and then we get three terms like that. So the first one, uh, if you look at the inverse, first one is going to give you the e to the t term, second one is going to give you the uh, cosine term, the third term going to give you the sine term. And it will be clear when you do the uh, problem in the inverse Laplace form video. So this will be a problem there. So you can, uh, you know, like how to find the uh, partial fraction. This one. Okay. Let's look at uh, one more. Let's look at a different type now. So what happened if you have two irreducible quadratic in the bottom? So let's look at this one. Suppose we have 12 divided by a squared plus 1 and a squared plus 4. And you see that both of them are irreducible. So how to do it? So we can write the same argument as before. So we can write this one as first uh, it is a squared plus 1. That means the numerator has to be a s plus b as the first one. The second one also it is a squared plus 4 and it's also irreducible so it has to be c s plus d so that's what you get now uh, we're going to use a standard argument here so we're going to multiply by the denominator on the left side so you get 12 equal we have a s plus b times the other one which is a squared plus 4 and the other one is c s plus d and you get a squared plus one that's the identity you get this has to be identity this is not equal sign these are identities because we're going to use the property of identity uh, if it is an identity then only you can equate the coefficients on the two sides if it's an equation you cannot okay so uh, that's like a theoretical need so now what we do, we start with the highest power and go down one by one. So we start with the highest power, which is the coefficient of S cube. So there's no S cube term here, but you can see that there's a S cube term. If you multiply first two terms, you get a S cube term. So that means the coefficients are A plus C. That's the only coefficient. There are no other way you get S cubed. So let's go to the next one. So which is the coefficient of s squared. So we start the highest power this. And again, there are no s squared term here. Now let's think about how to get a squared term. You can see you get a squared term if you multiply b s squared and d s squared. That means it is b plus d. So let's go to the next one, which is the coefficient of s. So how to get s term? Again, no s term. And you can see you get a term if you multiply first and the last and the first and the last. So that means the coefficient has to be uh, 4a plus c. And then uh, we go with the last one with the constant term. So you can see the constant term. So the constant term going to give you 12 on this side and on the other side you get 4b and a d that's what you get 4b plus d now the thing is that we have four equations how to solve them so we can use a special technique to solve them so what we're going to do we're going to subtract method for this one so you, if you look at the uh, first and the third one if you look at the first and third one and if you subtract the first one from the third one you can see if you subtract uh, the first one from the third one what happened you get 3a you get 3a equal 0 so this says that a equals 0 and if you plug in that value to the first equation you can see that c equals 0 so you quickly find a and c so that's the argument so what we did we subtract um, first equation from the third equation so we did um, 3 minus 1 that's going to give you this and the same thing so let's do now uh, if you look at 2 and 4 equation 2 and 4 you can see you again you subtract them 
So when you subtract, you can see the D get cancelled out. So you're gonna get um, so so again. So what we did here is uh, four minus two. So when you do that, and you can see uh, you get twelve equal you get twelve equal three b. And this is going to give you the b value, so b equal 4, because it's 12 of b equal 4. And then once you plug in that value to the equation uh, 2, you can see the d equal negative b, so that means negative 4. So we can easily find all those four values if you use this technique, you can just, just a subtraction. Subtract and you get the answer. Now let's plug in the value, and then we're going to get this. And then after that, you can see that you can easily invert these two because both of uh, they are all both uh, sine uh, sine uh, functions. And then you can try this one. So why don't you try this problem and see what numbers you get? And you also notice something special here. You can see the original problem has a twelve. It's a constant, and you can see the a and s. A and C get cancelled out and you only get B and D. So now let's see what happened. The numerator has a S term. So we have S over S squared plus 1, S squared plus 4. So it's very similar but only thing is you have S in there. So again same argument. So we can write this one as uh, A S plus B over S squared plus 1 and then C s plus d over uh, s squared plus 4 and then same argument so we have s equal a s plus b the other one and then c s plus d the other one so we can use the uh, coefficient technique because you can substitute anything here so we're going to get uh, these uh, four equations and then we do co coefficient of s uh, then we do the constant term uh, then as before we use the subtraction technique so we're going to go with the first and the third so when you subtract the first from the third and you can see you're going to get uh, 1 equal 3a so which is going to give you a equal 1 third and then if you look at the first equation it's going to give you c equal negative 1 third so we know a and c and do the same thing we can subtract 2 from 4 so when you do that d get cancelled out and you can get um, 0 equal 3b it's going to give you b equal 0 so if b equals 0 if you look at the equation number 2 you can see d equals 0 so now what happened b and d are 0 so you get b and d 0 so then uh, we can plug in the value so you will get this as the equation and so this is what you get, and you can see that if you do the inverse, this is a, a, a cosine, this also cosine. So you get cosine, cosine this time. So in the previous problem, you get sine, sine. So now let's see what happens if you have both of them, if you have a S term and a constant. So this is the next one, problem number 17. So we have S plus 3 over the same denominator. So uh, as before, we have this. And then we get this. Uh, now we can write four equations for the four unknown. So we get these four equations and we can solve them as before by subtracting. And the other two also going to give you this. And then we can plug in these values and split them into uh, four different factors like this. So you get four terms like this. So we split them, and also you can see that uh, we put a two and a negative a uh, two and a half, because uh, four is two squared, and you can easily invert. Okay, so now when you invert, this is what you get. So the first term going to give you one third, 
uh, cosine t the second term going to give you sine t third term going to give you one third cosine 2t the third one is going to give you one half sine 2t so these are the four terms you get from this one i'm going to do the inverse laplace transform i mean that's that's the whole idea so as a problem it's not like that bad but there are special techniques how to solve them so that's what you need to remember okay so let's look at another special case so that's the next one let's look at this special problem so let's say we have uh, s over s to the fourth power minus four like that and so this is like a special problem so you notice that uh, you can write the denominator as s squared squared minus 2 squared so then we can use the differential squares and we can write this one like this so we can write this one as s over s squared minus 2 and then s squared plus 2 because of that we can write the partial fractions so we have one with s squared minus 2 and we have another with s squared plus 2 so you can write this one as a s plus b and this one is c s plus d so again as before we write the four equations so this cannot uh, lead to s identical to uh, a s plus b uh, s squared plus 2 and the other one is c s plus d to s squared minus 2 so we're gonna write the four equations as before now so we get these are uh, four equations and you will notice that we cannot use the technique that we used earlier directly because last time we just subtract equation 1 from equation um, 3 but this time we cannot do that the reason is you can see there's a, a different coefficient in front so we do a slightly different one what we're going to do we're going to multiply the first equation by 2 and then we subtract so we can what we can do is we can say actually in this case you can add them so so we can write this one as 2 times uh, equation 1 so it is uh, 2 times equation 1 plus equation 3 so when you do that you can see you get 1 equal 4a 1 equal 4a and this is going to give you a so which is 1 fourth and then if you use equation 1 this is going to give you c which is negative 1 fourth so we found a and c so similarly if you look at the uh, equation 2 and 4 you're going to multiply the equation 2 by 2 and add to equation 4 so we do 2 times equation 2 add to equation 4 so when you do that and you're gonna get 0 uh, equal uh, 4b and this is going to give you b equals 0 and because of that d equals 0 okay so that's what you get and then we're gonna plug in the values and we can split them and write it like this and then you can clearly see that uh, the first one is a hyperbolic cosine and the second one is hyperbolic uh, regular cosine hyperbolic cosine regular cosine so you get the answer like this so if you invert you get this uh, one fourth cos square root 2t minus one fourth uh, cos square root 2t so one is a hyperbolic cosine the other one is a regular cosine okay so let's look at uh, maybe just two more problems with uh, uh, again uh, different types so uh, we would like to do one with the uh, direct delta function let's do one with the direct delta function now say we have uh, this is like a special problem so I will start here 
let's say we have 6 x to the fourth power divided by s squared plus 2 s squared minus 3 so what happened when you multiply these two you can see that you get a s to the fourth power when you divide by when you divide 6 x to the fourth power by s to the fourth power you can see you are going to get a 6 so the first term is 6 plus the rest of the term has a regular argument so this is going to be a squared plus 2 times a plus b and then from the other one we have a squared minus 3 so we have c s plus d and then as before so we have a 6 s to the fourth power actually we need more space so let's write it like this so now we're gonna go with the equate, uh, equating coefficients we're gonna start with the largest power and you can see there's no point writing x to the fourth because we only have the sixth there so we are not gonna write that so we're gonna go with the next one so we're gonna start with the cube so we get these three equations and we're gonna solve them as before so again consider the first and the third one if you multiply the first one by three and add to the third one we get this when you do that you get 5c equals 0 so this says that c equals 0 and then equation 1 says a equals 0 so we're done with the first two and then same with the uh, second and the fourth and what you can do is you can multiply the first one by 3 and add it to the fourth one so so you get 5d equal 5d equal 54 so this is that d equal 54 over 5 and from that you can find b so b equal you get 6 minus d and if you simplify you're going to get negative 24 fifth okay so that's going to give you all the a b c d values and then we can plug in them and we get this and then after you plug in this is what you get and then now you can see that uh, we have this special function what is the l inverse of 1 and we know that that's a direct delta function so we can write this one as 6 delta t that's the direct delta function and the next one is you can see it is 12 square root 2 over 5 the next one is the sine so which is sine square root 2t and the next one is 18 square root 3 over 5 and because of the negative sign this is the a shin this is going to be a shin hyperbolic sine square root 3 t so that is the inverse of uh, this one so yeah so first one is the direct delta function next one is the sine third one is the shin okay so let's do one last problem of a different type so um so let's do this one so last problem so how about you have something like this suppose we have uh, i'm going to put a star here because it's like a very special problem um so we have s plus 1 over 2s squared minus 4s plus 3 and clearly you can see that you cannot factor the denominator so you cannot factor that because there's a, a negative discriminant so what you do in this case we're going to use the completing square technique so use the completing square technique so to do that you notice that there's a 2 here so what we're going to do we're going to manipulate that first so you're going to uh, pull one half out first so when you pull one half out and um, actually let's let's try it like this so we have the numerator we leave it like that for the moment and then we leave with a 2 from the denominator so when you pull 2 out so you can see you get s squared minus 2s minus 2s again minus 2s and then we leave a space there and plus 3 
Now what we're going to do, we're going to need to know what is the special term that we need to add to make this one is a complete square. So that's the whole point. So what we normally do is we take the half of this coefficient and square that. That's the term we're going to add. So you can see when you take the half of that, which is negative 1, when you square, you see that the special term that you want to add is plus 1. But when you add plus 1, because of the 2, you are actually adding a 2. So to cancel that, you subtract 2. So it's like an add 2, subtract 2 situation. That's what you get. So if you simplify this a little bit, so you're going to get s plus 1 over 2. And then you know that because of the special addition, this is going to be s minus 1 squared plus 1. So that's what you get after the completing square. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to pull the one half out now. So we're going to say one half out. If you take one half out, you're going to get, get s plus 1 over s minus 1 squared 1 half. So you get that. Now what we're going to do, we're going to split them into two terms. So we can split them into two terms and we can write it like this. I'm going to write it here. So you can see one half. And then you also try to recreate this term in the numerator. So what are you going to do? You can write this one as uh, s minus 1, not just s, but s minus 1, because of the uh, denominator term, and s minus 1 squared plus 1 half, you can leave it like that, plus uh, because of this minus 1, you need to add extra 1 to cancel that out. So that means it can be 2. So it's a 2. And then here we have s minus 1 squared uh, plus a 1 half. And now actually we can easily invert this using the first uh, shifting property uh, like this one. So if we use this one, then we can write the final answer like this. So you can see the first one is the cosine, the second one is the sine, and you will see that there's a s minus one term there. So that's the reason why we have an e to the t term in both of them. And the first one is a cosine, second one is a sine. And uh, the reason why we have square root two is you can write this one as one over square root two to the square. Okay, so that's how you, that's what you do in a problem like that. You're gonna rewrite it like that and you split them and you get one cosine and one sine. If there's a negative sign, you will get uh, hyperbolic sine and cosine. Okay, so you can try these three problems and see whether you can invert them. Now use a similar technique to answer these questions. So first use the completing square of the bottom term and then use that to find the inverse Laplace transform of these three functions. So you can put the answer in the description, answer in the comment section. Thank you for watching.